still smiling but remaining resolute. Hi everyone, thank you for coming. The RBA governor faced off growing pressure to ease financial pain on Australian households. Based on what we know at the moment, rates will remain on hold for the time being. With rates at a 12-year high and at 4.35%, Michelle Bullock acknowledged people were hurting. We do recognise that there are people out there that are having to make some very, very difficult decisions. Being employed, she said, was crucial for paying bills and keeping roofs over their heads. If uh, the jobs market is still so strong and inflation is, um, as you've said, uncomfortably high, why is the economy barely growing? Consumption has been very, very sluggish. And part of that is because people are under pressure with interest rates, they're under pressure with inflation. You are observing per capita consumption uh, declining, as people say, but total demand, because we've got more people in the country, has been holding up. The Treasurer said the government was working to reduce migration and he took comfort a rate hike was off the table at this meeting. The fact that interest rates haven't gone up for the best part of the year, I think, uh, is an indication uh, that we have been making welcome and encouraging progress in the fight against inflation. The government needs to focus on doing the real job, which is to bring core inflation down uh, so that interest rates can come down so Australian standards of living can be restored to where it should be. There has been growing pressure for the RBA to cut after the US Federal Reserve began its rate cutting cycle. Australia's problem is quite unique. I mean, we look a bit different. The underlying rates of inflation are still well above where the RBA is comfortable. The reason they're holding rates here, rather than having gone much higher and then reversing course earlier, is because they're trying to ensure a soft landing. Whether they'll succeed or not remains to be seen. The Reserve Bank next meets in November, but don't hold your breath for a rate cut then. The Commonwealth Bank is forecasting rate relief in December, but that's ahead of most economists to predicting we won't see a rate cut until next year. Because policy works with a lag, you actually have to start cutting before you're at target, otherwise you've left it too late. And I think February is about right. Our view is we won't get a rate cut until somewhere like April or May next year, the second quarter of next year, because we think that inflation is going to take a while to come down, that it's going to prove to be sticky. It comes as evidence mounts that homeowners are struggling to meet repayments. The share of bad loans where borrowers are 90 or more days behind on their mortgage has risen above pre-pandemic levels to more than 1%. While single mum Tammy is meeting her home loan repayments, she says they make up 44% of her take-home pay. The mortgage is the biggest. It's eating away at my income, and it's the thing I have the least control over. You can you know, control the rest of it to a certain extent, but not the mortgage. Tammy has to budget every cent for herself and her daughter. A rate cut for them couldn't come soon enough. It would be like a weightlifting off my, my chest. Um, it would be, you know, it would mean we could do stuff, do more stuff. Um, you know, we'd go out for dinner. Occasionally we'd go and do day trips down the coast. Um, you know, I'd be able to maybe visit friends. Waiting for relief while walking a financial fine line.